Welcome and thank you all. Many of you listening in today are directly responsible for keeping us safe. My deepest gratitude for that. My name is Prashant Mumaya and I am in the technical sales team of Tableau in India. The last 12 months have changed so much in our lives and about how we think uh, about so many different things and how we work, uh, how we you know, manage our relationships. Everything seems to be you know, up there for uh, questioning. Uh, the sudden shock of the pandemic is just one of the many shifting sands climate, demographics, culture, and economics uh, are experiencing rapid changes. Uncertainty is everywhere. I wanted to take my 10 minutes uh, to make you think a little deeper about the way you work with data and do analytics in this changing world and focus a bit on the human side of the problem. So let's go. Uh, this is a, a statement I make. Uh, in times of uncertainty, we all turn to data because there's nothing in the past uh, that can guide us. Uh, it's, it's just saying that, hey, what is happening? We've become very tactical. For example, when the coronavirus outbreak started, the first thing we all did was to turn to data. Every day we say, hey, what are the number of cases? What's going on? What do the charts look like? And what is one of the first thing that comes to your mind when you speak about the pandemic? I bet for many of us, it was this flatten the curve graphic. Uh, it will remain in my memory for a long time. That's a data visualization. Uh, the flatten the curve graphic uh, is how the whole world has come to understand the actual problem we face with this pandemic and inspired the social distancing actions all over the world. This data visualization is symbolic, uh, not only of the pandemic, but the rallying call to action. Look at uh, your news feeds, your Twitter, your other social media. There is some version of this. Data helps us see and understand a situation and the actions we need to take, and then understand if our actions have made an impact. As the COVID-19 pandemic raged in 2020, it changed the way all of us absorb and think with data. We wanted to see new data, new analysis, and understand what it meant for us as individuals and as communities. We saw the, some of us saw the worst, and many of us who were lucky vicariously experienced what was going on in the world through data. Numbers and charts, numbers and charts, that's what we lived through all the time. A new normal is setting in, a new normal in which data is the foundational language. Yes. Data is a language. Come to think of it, data is actually a universal language. The language of numbers and charts and graphs remains the same, whether in English or Hindi or Bangla. And language implies literacy. Just like all other languages, we need to be able to view, read. If somebody places data in front of you, you understand, hey, this is data. I know how to look at it. I, you can pick up any newspaper, any post on your WhatsApp or social media. There is lots of data, some of it true, a lot of it made up. You have to pick up the signal out of the noise when you consume. And then once you do that, you need to be able to explore and write with the data. You will be called upon to create with data and say, present your analysis, give me ideas, give me a synthesis of stuff. You will, it is actually going to be a creative task. You're going from comprehension to communication. As with any language, data is becoming foundational to how we interact with each other, how a government interacts with a citizen, how corporates interact with their customers. More and more people are starting to speak this language. Tasks are more data focused than ever before. Data literacy is a core skill to help cope with the deluge of data. Just like the language you speak at home or at work, you will be required to be proficient in it to advance and to succeed. With this background, where I say data is ubiquitous, data is a language, let me pose my first question to you. And the question is a simple one, but it's always a trick question. Think about it. What is analytics? We live surrounded by this word today. You cannot read one page in a meaningful discourse 
uh, which does not state the word data or analytics. It has become a part of a standard, you know, professional vocabulary. Uh, you pop this question and you start hearing so many things, so many different perspectives. You will hear words such as predictive, statistics, machine learning, artificial intelligence. And of course, it is easy to get carried away by all the latest buzzwords that dominate news cycles. But it pays to get back to basics. Fundamentally, analytics is about understanding. Our need for understanding is deeply human. We have been asking questions since the beginning when we took consciousness. How do we understand? The way we understand is by asking questions. It's an ancient Indian tradition going back millennia to the Vedas and the Upanishads. Just like with any other language, analytics is the discourse and the conversations you create with data, you create with data. And using the answers you get, you pose more questions iteratively till you have insights that drive action and change. The focus is on questions. Analytics focuses on answering questions using data. Let's take that very simply. Analytics is just a fancy term given to answering questions with data and any sort of questions. So it does not matter what sort of questions you have. The second question I wanted to put there is, you know, this, this, is, this is something again, right? Two very obvious questions, but it's very interesting to see what responses I get as I meet a lot of you people uh, out in the field. Hopefully I'll get to do that sometime soon again. Uh, who can do analytics? Ask yourself this question. You are leaders today. Who in your organizations can do analytics? Can you do analytics? Who does analytics? I know it seems so simple, but most data infrastructure and processes today are designed to prevent this. Think of the last time you as somebody who is running a department or somebody who's running a hospital had a question about your data. And, and imagine if you could do the analysis right there without a second thought, uh, do you have all the tools in the hands of those who have the context, the questions and the greatest need? Uh, the frontline workers, the doctors, the infrastructure manager, the people at the Mondays, are these people equipped with the data they need to solve problems for citizens, to provide better services? But most of you, sadly today, can't do that. There are silos of engagement with data. One key reason is how data projects are treated like any other IT project. We are likely comfortable with that way of working, but imagine you know, all the analytics projects you run today are in some variation of this basic project. You, you have you know, a bunch of people who have questions. When they have questions, what do we make them do? We make them write down some sort of an RFP, a requirement document, uh, and then uh, we likely you know, RFP these out or give them to you know, a, a set of specialists to develop. Uh, these specialists are experts in the you know, arcane wizardry and sorcery of databases and Hadoop and reporting tools. Uh, but what happens once you get the answers back? All of analysis and understanding is iterative. The moment you get answers back, you have more questions. And then you reiterate on the process, reiterate on the process. And this could take weeks or months. Uh, it is probably good for business as usual at times, but fundamentally it does not scale in today's uncertain environment where the need for agility is crucial. Imagine uh, you know, taking several weeks or even months to answer simple questions about the spread of the pandemic. But many of you know how painful it was and the amount of effort it took. I know I have been part of some of these efforts. Scale suffers as, as there are always more people with questions and more questions and people to answer those questions. You need to change the way you look at data and analytics and how people who actually have the questions 
are able to do analysis. So that was another question, who can do analytics? But this is not an unknown situation. It's not a new situation. We have seen something similar before. I talked about data as a language, and this is about literacy. Once upon a time in, you know, around the world, literacy was low. You know, very few people could read or write. In our country today, even we have lots of programs that are focused on getting people literate. Here's approximately 200 years of literacy estimates. Uh, there has been an inversion of the literacy ratio in the world from about 15% literate to now, you know, about 200 years back to about 15% illiterate. The ability to read, write, to get an education produced a great economic improvement in our lives. More people could participate in the areas that were off limits to them. People could now become scientists, engineers, doctors, economists, political leaders. The world changed and peace and prosperity kept moving along the quality of life to what we see today. If we look at, you know, inter sort of, uh, I overlap this with economic output. This is what happened to the economic output. It just keeps skyrocketing as literacy improves. Liter uh, your uh, economic impact keeps increasing. The same is true with data. In the future, a lot of our uh, improvements, our uh, prosperity will depend on how we are able to harness data at scale. The next set of innovations will come out of our working with data. We need to step away from the notion that data is only for the experts. When it is when you get the people, the processes, the technology right, you will create a community, a movement that will propel your analytic adoption and change and make life better for every citizen in this country. Now, let me give you a short story. Uh, the impact of COVID-19 have been felt across India's every nook and corner, every walk of life. This specific example is from our agricultural sector. Uh, there were, in the initial part of the pandemic, there were concerns about food shortages. Uh, according to Satshior, an expert in satellite remote sensing and big data analytics, one of the key issues has been disruption to normal supply chains. Uh, with local markets, transport companies, and warehouses shut down, the farmers were forced to find alternative ways to get food to buyers. Uh, Satshior stepped up alongside three other companies, Numerate, Krishi Hub, and ThinkAg, and together they created a non-commercial map, non-commercial, which helps to connect different players in India's agricultural supply chain. These include farmers and buyers, as well as logistics, storage, and agri-machinery companies across the country. Uh, data for the map provided by Tableau, what you see here is actually Tableau, uh, is referred to as the essential uh, supplies exchange is collected from public agencies and also from crowdsourced uh, you know google forms where people can register their supplies or services the data is then plotted on the map and made searchable using tableau using this visualization allows farmers traders and consumers to find and connect with those who can transport store or even process or sell their goods uh, an example was a tomato farmer who was able to find a driver to uh, transport about 50 kilos, uh, 50 tons of tomatoes to a buyer in nearby city. Uh, there are many examples of how this has helped, but the most important thing was time. In all cases, the critical factor taken to respond to the situation, this is food stuff. It will go bad. It will go waste. It will not feed anybody and the farmers will make a loss. Having that quick response, literally Satyar was able to create this from public data sources in within a week and make it available. That is really critical. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about if, if we move on from there uh, is a lot of times we look at data from a very infrastructure perspective. Uh, there is data infrastructure and, you know, there is Hadoop and big data, uh, but yeah, that is important. Uh, and then on the other side, there is tools and algorithms. We are fascinated by these. Uh, 
all of us do lots of POCs and you know, try to figure out that tool or algorithm that automatically solves everything for us. Uh, but most of the times you find that you don't have the right questions uh, to answer. Right now, uh, given everything that is going on in the artificial intelligence world, uh, people are the only entities that can ask the right questions. We have the creativity to ask questions, but unfortunately we do not focus enough there. Uh, analytics is very essentially a creative process, figuring out what data, what tools, algorithms, et cetera, need to come together with making sure that the right people are connected into the data and are able to work with the data directly. Uh, there is, you know, analytics at scale can drive change. And scale is a function of people with the data, with the platforms, where everyone is potentially an analyst. And that moves us ahead. Finally, I know COVID-19 has accelerated all our digital journeys, right? There is digital everything today. Everybody is talking, hey, I'm digital, I'm digital, I'm digital. Uh, everything that is digital generates data. That is the foundation of everything digital. And all that data is nothing if we don't make it actionable and accessible by those who can do something meaningful with it. If you don't analyze it and use it to provide better services, better engagement, better training, better products to citizens to, to build a better nation. That is the crux of every transformation. And every digital transformation is essentially a data transformation. We may look at it slightly differently, but remember it is the data that will make a difference. Uh, since our founding, we have been on a mission as Tableau, and that is the really simple statement to help people see and understand data. And when we say people, it's not just the experts, it's everyone from the line workers to the experts. It is a simple yet powerful statement, and we believe in times like these, it is more relevant than ever. Everyone needs access to timely, detailed, and trustworthy information to think and act quickly. Uh, as we speak, Tableau is being used with many government departments from tracking the pandemic to informing citizens to working on what's coming with the vaccines across the entire fabric of data that the government has. We are on this journey with you and we are ready to help you to figure this out and enable your people to leverage the data that you have. Thank you very much.